in the news as of lately, there's been a lot of talk about all these different things you can do to improve your heart health all while looking at the things that is destroying your heart health. I think there's a couple reasons for this. One is because, well, there's a shot out there that many people are getting that's causing heart inflammation. So that's highlighted heart-related issues. But the fact is, is that in the United States, somebody dies of a cardiovascular related event every 36 seconds and cardiovascular disease remains as the number one killer of people prematurely. So it's something that is very important. It really should have been talked about for many, many years. So what we're going to do is talk about a couple new things in the studies that have shown to deteriorate your heart health and a few things you can do to boost your heart health. Let's look at this study right here. New study links phthalates to cardiovascular disease. Phthalates are chemical compounds primarily used in plastics, okay? Past research has identified links between phthalates and cardiovascular disease, and a recent study has helped identify at least one mechanism linking phthalate exposure to cardiovascular disease. Now, this is pretty interesting because when we look at plastics in general, a lot of people think, well, my plastic that I use doesn't have BPA in it. And people identify BPA as being dangerous, but they really ignore the rest of the different chemical compounds used in plastic. The fact is, and this is just a secret of the you know plastic industry, is that whenever a particular chemical like BPA is identified as being dangerous to the body and car carcinogenic, basically what happens is they make it a, a small tweak to that chemical. They make a derivative of it that hasn't been studied, that hasn't been proven in the research, and they throw that in. And then, of course, everybody stops complaining. But the fact is, is if you're eating out of plastics, drinking out of plastics, you should stop. There was a point in our life uh, where we went into our kitchen, my wife and I, and we just literally took out the stacks and stacks of plastic containers that we had and plastic cups and plastic everything and we threw it all in the garbage and we have moved to glass since then. So make sure that you're not consuming food and beverages out of plastics because they do have a dangerous compounding effect over a lifetime, okay? And so we're seeing right here, it's linked to cardiovascular disease. We're gonna move on to this one thing that is connected with almost every cardiac related death. Okay, according to the World Health Organization, ischemic heart disease and stroke were the top two causes of death across the world in 2016. Although there have been dramatic declines in cardiovascular disease, ailments in the category continue to remain major causes of loss of health and life. In the U.S., the CDC Division of for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention reports that one in every three deaths is from heart disease and one dollar of every six dollars is spent on cardiovascular disease. So, Basically, you're looking at a very expensive problem, but also a problem that is killing a lot of people prematurely. We're going to get right to the point here. What they basically come down to, uh, it comes down to in this article, is that it's sleep. The one thing correlated with all these heart-related issues is a lack of sleep, okay? And they go on in this article to talk about the pandemic and how basically, you know, it really interfered with people's sleep schedules and was causing people to get lesser sleep when they went and asked people, you know, how much sleep did you get prior to the pandemic and how much sleep are you getting now? Everybody was getting lesser amounts of sleep. The other thing that um, was looked at is quality of sleep. So if you have really poor quality of sleep, that is also linked to cardiac morbidity. And this is a big problem because some people find themselves where they, they, they think they're sleeping at night. They're laying in bed for a lot of hours, but yet they're not getting sleep. I actually found myself in this position before. You know, I have four young children. And at one point, I just was feeling really down in the dumps with my health. My, I had fatigue off the charts. I felt like I could never get enough sleep. Well, one of the things I was afraid of is that I maybe have sleep apnea, right? Because this is one thing that any, you know, intelligent person would maybe correlate with their health problems is a lack of sleep and then what could be causing it. Well, one of the things I did is I started actually tracking my oxygen saturation levels at night. Turns out I didn't have sleep apnea. But what was happening is that just because of our kids waking us up at night and we had a new baby at the time and everything like that, well, I was laying in bed for hours and hours, but I was not sleeping. So that was a real problem. So basically, I started doing things in order to actually improve my sleep at night, my quality of sleep. And this is a big thing. So you can lay in bed for a long time, but you may not be falling into a deep sleep cycle. Wearing a sleep tracker 
can be highly, highly beneficial for giving you the proper information you need to know about your quality sleep. Sleep is a pillar of health. Somebody cannot be healthy if they don't have good sleep. And now we're finding out, well, it certainly is related to cardiovascular related disorders. Sleep disorders associated with using technology at night. So this article talks about how if you're on your phone at night, on your computer at night, the blue screens at night, the TV at night, it all causes you to not sleep well. And it's a huge problem amongst um, uh, mostly the millennials and the Generation Z, those are people under 25, okay? Generation X is also, uh, it's, it's pretty high up there too when we look at people who are suffering with the technology sleep related disorder. Sleep def deprivation associated with more health conditions. Okay, so some people develop health conditions after health conditions, which starts to cause them to not be able to sleep at night. So that's something to consider. And then also the num average number of sleep hours dropping. Okay, so just like, for instance, in America alone, one of the things that society is known for here is just pushing themselves to the limit, right? I mean, it's amazing how many people are walking around buying um, uh, some of these energy drinks that have 200 milligrams and 300 milligrams of caffeine instead of sleeping properly at night so that you have energy we live in a society that basically doesn't sleep at night and then just pushes themselves to the limit with caffeine which is devastating to the body over a long period of time so basically what they found is that 2019 results show Americans are sleeping less and less. They asked 3,000 adults about their sleep habits, how satisfied they were with their sleep and about the, and the frequency of their sleeping, and they compared it from those in 2018. What they found was a sad commentary on the speed at which modern society has chosen to live. It seems that getting at least six hours has become more challenging with each passing year. In 2018, results from the survey showed that the average person was sleeping six hours and 17 minutes each night, but in 2019, that had dropped to five and a half hours, okay? Get your sleep, people. I mean, that's, that's the thing that's gonna be most important. And I will tell you, the number one thing that I have done to improve my sleep over the past year is started taking uh, magnesium or four bed. Okay. I'll take two to 400 milligrams of magnesium before bed. And it is incredible how much that has improved my sleep to where I'm able to stay asleep and not wake up in the middle of the night. And more importantly, beyond that, I'm able to just fall asleep and not wake up first thing in the morning. Sometimes I'd wake up at like 5 a.m. and it's like, oh my gosh, I need to sleep. Why am I waking up? Increase your magnesium intake. That's something that's highly, highly beneficial. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to the magnesium that I use because here's the other thing too is that there's a lot of different forms of magnesium. Not all of them um, uh, work the same and I don't want to really get into all the details of magnesium right now because I could talk to uh, talk about that for about a half hour, but I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in that. New study finds that social isolation increases heart problems. Well, isn't this interesting? Okay. And the irony in this is just, you know, off the charts. An Australian study, and why is this so, have so much irony? Well, it just turns out that Australians are the people who are locking everybody down due to the virus, right? And just like being brutal in their approach to this. They have camps they're putting people in. And Australian studies found that older adults with poor social health who also have low social support and are isolated were 42% more likely to develop cardiovascular disease and twice as likely to die from it. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, I saw in my clinic a lot of elderly struggle throughout the whole pandemic because of the isolation. It was hard on them. It was too hard on them. It was devastating. And I've seen some of them not be able to come out of it, which is very sad. Okay. So, you know, make sure that you are communicating with people, um, having good relationships, not isolating because that leads to increased amounts of heart problems. But let's talk about a little bit of solutions because this is kind of interesting. The third most popular supplement and why people are taking it. Well, the third most popular supplement happens to be CoQ10, okay? And CoQ10 is very interesting because it has been shown to help with a lot of heart-related issues. Why is CoQ10 so important? Many conditions, including heart disease and migraines for, for which CoQ10 has been found beneficial for, appear to be rooted in mitochondrial dysfunction. CoQ10 is used 
used by every cell in your body, but especially your heart cells. So if you're somebody who regularly gets migraines, like certainly CoQ10 could be beneficial, but also in general, just for your heart health. Like I take it uh, myself personally, okay? So one of the things it helps do is it helps fight uh, inflammation, which is really important, especially when it comes to uh, cardiovascular health and your heart vessels as well. Um, it can help improve atrial fibrillation, which is going to be very important, can stop the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, okay? Um, and it can also help with high blood pressure. Uh, CoQ10 is always a go-to if I find somebody who has high blood pressure and I'm working with them. Heart failure, okay? So pretty much any heart-related anything, CoQ10 is good. Highly recommend it. Car uh, chronic kidney disease, stroke, dyslipidemia, okay? So basically looking at... Um, uh, your cholesterol levels. And there's a lot of these cholesterol lowering drugs that actually deplete your body of CoQ10, which is very bad for your cardiovascular health. So if you're ever taking any type of cholesterol medication, you're always supposed to be taking CoQ10. Um, systemic inflammation, migraines, which we had mentioned, PCOS, okay, it really helps with um, blood sugar and uh, insulin resistance. Uh, reducing the amount of insulin resistance in the body. So PCOS, and then of course, insulin resistance, which I just mentioned, okay? So CoQ10, very beneficial. Um, basically, what I wanna jump into next though, I don't know if they talk about it in this particular article, um, how, um, how to supplement, yeah, right here, okay? So basically, you know, as you look at CoQ10, you wanna take ubiquinol, okay? Because um, as you look at the um, different forms of it, you wanna make sure taking the active form of it. The other thing that you wanna do is take between 100 and 200 milligrams daily, okay? Now, in this article, they say, as a general rule, the sicker, sicker you are, the more you need. The suggested dose is usually between 30 milligrams to 100 milligrams a day if you're healthy or 60 to 1200 daily if you're sick and have underlying conditions. If you have an active lifestyle, exercise a lot or under a lot of stress, you may want to increase your dose to two to 300 milligrams per day. Importantly, if you're on a statin drug, you need at least 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of ubiquinol or CoQ10 every day. So stick to the active form. That's my recommendation, but also somewhere around 200 milligrams every day is what I like in, according to this article right here, you can actually do more of that. Okay. Let's also talk about seven herbs and supplements for your heart and heart failure. Number one on the list is CoQ10 ubiquinol. Okay. We just discussed that. Another one is omega-3 and omega-6 fats. I'm a huge fan of people taking the omega-3 and 6 fats. I mean, literally if you when people ask me, what supplement should I take daily? And being that 99% of people who ask me that, I know nothing about their health, okay? I know nothing about it. But one thing I can tell you is that in general, people should take omega-3 and omega-6 fats, okay? Along with that, you should look at a multivitamin and a probiotic and a vitamin D. But beyond those, omega-3 and 6 fats are very important for your brain health, lowering inflammation in the body, important for your heart health, very, very important. Um, Hawthorne um, is another one that can be used in order to uh, basically uh, support your heart health. So that's one right there. And a lot of times you're gonna find that Hawthorne isn't one that you may take like alone on its own, but it's typically associated with like a formula of a whole bunch of different herbs that um, will improve your heart health. So big fan of Hawthorne. Magnesium is huge. I already mentioned magnesium from a sleep perspective, but Magnesium is critical for over 300 enzyme systems in your body and also the regulation of your blood pressure. So if you have blood pressure issues, if you have heart issues, like you absolutely should be taking magnesium. One study published in the Journal of Congestive Heart Failure found that oral supplementation of 800 milligrams per day of magnesium for three months produced improved atrial function when compared to placebos in heart failure patients. The importance of lost minerals to heart health has been clearly ascertained with low magnesium levels contributed to oxidative stress, compromised antioxidant defenses, 
tissue wasting, and more problems with heart failure. So huge, huge fan of magnesium. And the same magnesium I use to improve my sleep is the same one I use for my heart health and my neurological health and my brain health and everything in between. I'll put links below. Arginine is another one. It, a lot of times you'll find these in like workout supplements, um, but you can also just go get this isolated on its own. Very good for dilating and relaxing the arteries. So big fan of arginine for your cardiovascular health as well. So here's a lot of tips on how you can improve your cardiovascular health. Start implementing these today, and I promise you your heart health will be better tomorrow. If you like this video, I really think you'll like this video over here next.